next session is from Puna chapter uh, from Matangi Shankar, who is a senior architect at Capgemini, uh, with yeah, having 20 plus years of IT experience, extensively again in banking and financial domain. She will be talking about applying creative thinking as safe agilist. Before we start the session, let me thank our Agile Network India founding sponsor, Innovation Roots. Innovation Roots is a leading consulting and training service provider, helping organizations to achieve business agility and beyond. It is one of the leaders and pioneers of niche publishing services and well known for content collaboration with global thought leaders, authors, and creators. For more information, visit www.innovationroots.com. Just in, <clears throat> I'll not read the completely, do's and don'ts, but everyone is aware. Use high quality speakers and headphones. Don't, no, please, uh, and please keep your microphones muted and video disabled. Questions will be taken over the chat box. And post the session, please share your feedbacks. With this, I would like to welcome Matangi. Uh, take over from here. Okay, welcome everyone to this session and I would like to thank the entire ANI team and the sponsors for giving me this opportunity to talk today. So as Prashant mentioned, the topic for this session would be applying creative thinking as a safe architect. I'll discuss more on the title and the agenda for this. Um, I'm a senior certified IT architect in Capgemini. So I carry two decades of IT experience and I have extensive experience working with uh, uh, predominant banks like Barclays, HSBC, Deutsche Bank, Bank of Austria, Nationwide, ANZ. So there are, these are multiple banks. Uh, so that way it has given me a great exposure on the processes as well as the enterprises. So the idea behind the session is also the same. Uh, and I've worked on different disciplines of uh, architecture, application, enterprise, integration, security act architecture on digital and open banking solutions and microservices. I also carry end-to-end -end solution digital architecture experience within HSBC. And these are the other activities I've been doing in Capgemini, right? I uh, talk more on the architecture community, give more of my contribution there. I'm a diversity lead as well. So I sponsor more and more architects so that there is a lot of growth in our stream. And that's my LinkedIn profile. So the agenda for today, right, uh, it's I'll be covering safe for enterprise high level overview, what all components it has, and I'll be giving you understanding of portfolio, epics, features, enablers, and also I'll be quoting a lot of examples and my own experience while working with different customers. I'll try to make the session as insightful as possible, and then I'll give you the role mapping, right? The surf te terminologies which are being used in the scaled agile framework and the role plays uh, done by various teams in the enterprise while working especially for digital solutions. And the heart of the solution, heart of this topic would be more on, I'll be talking more on the solution train, uh, which consists of solution development, context and intent. So at the end of this session, probably two slides before that, I'll be explaining one use case and giving the business context capability. And I'll give a walkthrough of one solution architecture. And it would be an activity on both the sides from me as well as the audience to take a solution architecture and how each component is fitting into the safe model, how we align the safe uh, topics with the architecture components. And uh, while do we do this activity, it will be followed by Q&A. So that's the idea behind the session. Uh, this uh, business portfolio configuration. So this is from Scale Agile Framework, this model. So herein, I'll be talking about the portfolio configuration, uh, portfolio vision, right? I'll be covering the portfolio backlog. Then I'll be covering the epics. What are epics? What are enablers? what are solutions and then i'll be touching upon this essential part of it which is solution context okay and then who who are the stakeholders who are involved in this entire process right we together as a team we build it 
So unlike the earlier days of models where we had waterfall and V model, right, where the transparency to the customers was very less. So how the transparency here can be brought about. So that is the main aspect of looking at it. And then I'll be covering uh, backlogs, tech depths, okay, as much as possible. So these are the key things that I'll be covering, not all of them, because uh, it will become too much and lengthier topic. I'll be covering uh, enterprise architects, solution architects, solution vision. Okay, that's the intent of this topic. So what's the idea behind uh, uh, to choose this kind of topic is because uh, the audience might come from various streams, right? They might be more towards domain, more towards process. Some might be only technologists. So the idea is to get all the practitioners together and think and align the safe model to the solution architecture. So that brings a lot of benefit in understanding the process, how it, uh, how it benefits the day-to-day -day work that the solution architects do and how the solution architecture work also gets more easier and more transparent to everybody, right? It's not any one person or any two to three person working in a project anymore. So it's more of collaboration. Uh, so that's the idea behind the topic. And uh, what is an... Yeah, sure. So before uh, uh, getting to the uh, heart of it, let me explain the key terms, which I'll be repeating more often in the session, is enabler. Enabler uh, sits at the top. It comes at the uh, height of a portfolio enabler. Or you will see more like value streams, word of value streams being often used in enterprises which follow partial safe model or full safe model, OK? What is an enabler for them? An enabler, right? It could be a solution enabler. Like typically, if you consider an internet banking, right? You will have digital payments, fund transfer. How do you design that end-to-end -end solution is an enabler. And then uh, it could be a loan closure also, a mortgage loan or a personal loan. You're closing it, right? That is an enabler. These are functional enablers and there are NFR enablers as well. If you consider in infrastructure enabler, particularly I could quote an example while working in public sector banks like uh, Bank of Maharashtra and uh, Punjab National Bank. So typically there will be some enablers where you will need to uh, provide a load balancer right, for different applications because the applications reside mainly on on-premise. If it is cloud, you have auto scaling ab ability and all, but you will need to have infrastructure enabler and keep on monitoring your on-premise applications, right? If it is me meeting the performance requirements and if the uh, sizing of the products that has been there because the request of an application and the projection keeps on increasing. So at one point in time, your application cannot withstand with the same amount of infrastructure that is built. So you might need to want to add Add an infrastructure enabler okay to actually work on it and so that your application is not impacted so like this enablers are generally created by business owners or product owners because they look at different value streams I'll come to that shortly so they will keep on looking at today my enterprise has these enablers what are the additional enablers will be required so that my applications are not impacted and my customer experience is still good. So that way these enablers keep on adding value streams and these enablers, they keep on being used exchangeably because every value stream will have multiple enablers. Value stream as in it can be considered more uh, like a business category. I'm using this simple word. But value stream, uh, if you take, for example, of a bank, right, typical value streams will be like I have an account value stream or I have a payment value stream. If you consider insurance, I have an insurance value stream and each value stream uh, will have different epics, different enablers. And who decides all of this is like, you know, value stream assignment or um, what enablers has to be there is decided at the top level and then the entire project and other execution follows. So the other thing which I said I'll cover is about the solution train who are involved. What is solution context? Please hear this out clearly so that everybody will be working on this during the session. And then what are backlogs? I'll be covering here itself backlogs. 
so what happens is uh, you have an enabler which you're working on right today and then uh, typically there could be multiple requirements functional requirements non-functional requirements and some uh, solutions uh, due to many reasons like you know business priorities or uh, funding is running out or timelines you might want to do a tactical solution which is not strategic and which is not agreed okay and then what you're doing is uh, uh, you're building something for time being and then you would later want to migrate it so that kind of this kind of example covers both uh, the migration part you're including as a backlog and basically by bringing a building a solution which is not strategic right you are introducing a tech debt tech debt is something which is not agreed by all especially architects okay due to some reasons if you put a strong factor and justification why you want to do this and uh, by doing this what is the business benefits that is being brought into the enterprise with kind that kind of dis, uh, justification you go to a design authority you get it agreed and you do it that that becomes a tech debt that you're bringing in and the migration part of you know doing a throw away solution you want to migrate and do it as per the strategic is what is put in the backlog so this is one small example of a backlog while there could be many okay this is a pyramid which i have put in so that we get a clear understanding on just what i've talked about at a portfolio level can be considered as an enterprise level right in the portfolio there are lot of chunks lot of value streams as i'm showing you on the right side so at a portfolio level what is my vision what is my short term vision what is my long term vision what is my current scenario and what is my future where i want to be those kind of things are discussed and that's where uh, you drill down to different value streams i have accounts value stream if you consider a typical example of internet banking you can think of many such use cases of what can be done in the account value stream right and then if you decide those enablers and that will have a big epic uh, uh, epic could be an entire digital solution of uh, probably closing a loan for closing a loan what are the things that is uh, processes that are involved right first of all entire every use case comes with a proper uh, authentication model security model so those kind of steps are there authenticate authentication authorization he's done and to close a loan there are a lot of things involved again and it depends upon every bank it's different what are the rules they are different so that that is a larger epic and then what you do to complete the entire solution you build lot of stories so that every story if it is covered in an epic your solution is entirely implemented so this kind of idea it gives a great transparency right to anybody whether it is a developer or whether it is a market segment lead who has to talk to the business users or whether it's a product owner or whether it's a delivery manager or if chief architect solution architect everything will be on your kanban dashboard your epics are stated properly your stories are stated properly with a description what are the things that needs to be done if a developer is closing a story did he do all the quality checks did he do all the uh, sonar cube analysis did he cover all the unit tests only by completing all of that he can complete a story so it's not like earlier days where the reviews or you know are not properly tracked even if it is done if that person leaves the company we will have no visibility but with this kanban dashboard which is a tool typically followed for agile right even a, whether it is a solution architecture work or a developer work you'll have that end to end transparency and one can close that uh, epic or the story only when all these tasks are done so that way it gives a great visibility to everybody and we all collaborate and work together so that's a very good example why safe architects and uh, solution architects should be aligned to do the work okay uh, let me come to the solution development okay what gen typical things are done during the process of developing a solution generally a business analyst after talking to a market segment lead he comes up with a business capability 
like if if i take an example of you know i want to track all the payments domestic payments what is being done in my entity or my region so that kind of high level requirement if a, a market segment lead gives then the business analyst will go drill down and find out like you know how to what is the as a scenario do we have anybody in the bank doing this kind of activity is the operation team or staff doing some kind of tracking is the ivr doing so these are the various channels right i'm talking more on the digital front i'll be coming shortly but there are various channels through which a solution can be provided through ivr through mobile through browser which is digital or through a staff channel uh, where a customer walks into the branch and asks the agent look i need the a list of payments i have done a payment recently can you tell me what happened to my payment okay then coming up with the minimum viable product for a particular requirement for a particular business capability if i want to deliver a digital solution what is the scope of that digital solution what is the scope of that payment tracker what are the different systems or what are the different payments that will be scoped and tracked in my digital journey that's business capability now why agile because this is a big solution we have our mvp we can't wait for number of months to deliver the journey and finally understand that the business users are not happy we don't want to do that we want to do it in iteration and sprints so that we get a regular feedback of what is happening with my solution is the customer happy am i getting more insights and more users who are using my solution so these kind of things we will get a, a proper feedback and insights of whether my solution is good or needs to be improved or needs to be migrated okay something which is able to be moved quickly and easily is agile okay and typically as i said uh, at a portfolio level you have lot of epics we basically do it into short phases of work okay like typically you have a big problem you break into ch chunks so that your big problem has a solution so that's about it now why architecture is required why solution architecture is required i i would say it's very much required especially at the discovery phase because your business analyst your market segment lead product owners comes with certain requirement that initial analysis and discovery design is required so that you give them end to end solution uh, of the discovery what is happening today study the enterprise and what 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 your to be digital solution will look like okay you can produce it in any way which is agreed by your company or which is agreed by your customers you can produce different views uh, which is you know required by different stakeholders suppose a uh, uh, security architect he would want to see more on the security side of the application what are the different controls taken care in your solution if a customer logs in are you doing fraud checks or are you, are you authenticating a customer even if it is he is authenticated are you ensuring that he is authorized to seek any transaction information so he will be interested on that so you give a security model view a conceptual view in your solution architecture deliverable and then for on the functional aspects a business analyst will be interested right he will want to know this is my mvp i had given you Uh, are all my requirements covered into your solution a payment tracker the different flows that i've shown you in a ux flow do you have a solution for that he would be interested in that so you typically want to nail down drill down and show more of sequence flows so that you know it's understood by the business analyst as well so like this in the solution architecture you give typically various views so that it's agreed by everybody and also you will know the limitations what is out of scope what is not covered into the solution and it gives a great transparency to everybody so that's why this part of uh, uh, work is very important during discovery phase while i am talking on all this if you are working in a different sector or in a different uh, uh, technology or different domain altogether please try to Uh, think on safe terms and your solution how you would align everything together the more agile we are the more um, uh, as a safe model we work right uh, the transparency is more and our work also is you know there are no surprises at the, towards the end of delivery right we will all be very clear and uh, we will be able to identify what's happening 
so in the same case i would not say that you know it's fully 100% perfect and all still there will be challenges around you know infrastructure or skills and things like that but at least we know what we are doing right somebody leaves the company or some somebody else joins there is a replacement knowledge transition would become very easier so while i'm talking on all of this on the bank perspective you can also apply the same thinking on your uh, other uh, sectors where you're working so this is the common terms which is used in a safe model typically while we are working day to day and the roles played for execution the right left side shows all the safe terms and the right side shows the roles played by different people in the team or in the enterprise okay if i start with enabler i gave an example of what's an enabler now who works on the enabler it could be a business analyst also because he wants to feed in some more requirements into it a solution architect sa a lead architect or a chief architect want to look at the enabler whether the requirement and capabilities given properly to the enabler so that's the thing and stories are the small pieces of work which i discussed some time back where small team of developers called pods and api designers if you choose api as a middleware right those people will look into the stories and solution architects also look into the stories if it is required and if it is asked by somebody to pitch in and see the story whether it's uh, right or wrong okay architecture runway i have a separate slide for that i'll be explaining in detail but for now just understand that it is mostly used by developers or senior developers or even an api designer and then features these are very important it will be displayed in your kanban dashboard for a capability you have features multiple features right uh, if the business capability is too complex to achieve you will uh, actually define multiple features what are the different features for this capability that needs to be built so that my business capability goes into production okay and those are uh, typically worked out in sprints by multiple developers and coming to the solutions which we produce in the initial stage of discovery where we do all the homework uh, uh, behind you know understanding the analysis understanding the as is uh, finding out the loopholes finding out the limitations finding out the blockers where we detail out almost everything what are the assumptions of a solution what are the risk that solution might take and what is the mitigation if this risk risk occurs okay things like that and up all uh, covering all this you also basically give you give the different uh, views which i mentioned right so that every stakeholder reads it in the way that he wants to understand uh, how everything is designed together so in the discovery phase when you uh, designing or building an architecture of an it system you also do some point of governance work and governance is required at all phases okay you do a kind of impact assessment you understand whether the thing that has come to you of bucket as a solution architect okay whether it is complex medium or very light kind of work this will help to understand the costs and funding around it if the interfaces that needs to be there to build a solution talking to the back end is more right then it becomes complex so things like that can be considered to understand the complexity of it if the number of ui screens are more and if the number of back end interactions or fulfillment systems are more then it becomes complex so there is a factor which is defined to just you know differentiate between medium and complex okay and obviously the simple uh, architecture would be anything you like you know it's just not more than one or two interfaces and i just have two to three screens and i just have one api to talk to the back end then it becomes a simple solution okay of course there are many challenges and different perspectives to discuss that but this is typically what is done in a safe agile working model in enterprises okay now coming to the solution and solution context which i will detail more if you see the picture which is taken from scale agile framework context and intent they go together right context is something where you give the requirements solution requirements not a business or domain related requirements it typically it becomes more as a technical requirement you have like a repository of requirements stored in your contents and intent is where your delivery will execute so some examples which i can give here is 
okay if i have to uh, design a journey which i talked about what is the operational environment of my journey or a deployment model right uh, if i have some of the apis as a middleware integration layer where where will they be deployed what is the operational environment where will my application be deployed and fulfillment systems will they be legacy or there is a requirement to migrate so you basically you have all the technical requirements also as well in the context so this brings a lot of opportunity right for everybody who are working in different teams to understand that this is my technical requirement and i need to implement accordingly so most some in some many areas we have uh, at least i have seen that you don't have technical requirements straight away you have the business ask and straight away you want to uh, if even if you have that little bit of design you want to deliver it but technical requirements are also a must right especially when it comes to variable and fixed what are fixed uh, requirements are something you know mostly will be the same for most of the enablers like if i come to security model like authentication and authorization the high level uh, platform for security will be the same okay that is always fixed but the authorization requirements could vary from journey to journey and that becomes variable and your functional requirements like uh, whether it is fund transfer or closing a loan or doing some check deposit digitally all those functional aspects will vary from journey to journey that becomes variable so the, if you look at these two teams as solution context are the place where more of system architects and solution architects work so they bring all the technical requirements they will give you the entire solution architecture deliverable they will give you sequence flows they give you architecture overview they will give you the deployment model they will give the usage view who are the end customers who will be using this solution so those requirements they give and intent are the people are basically it would be typically the delivery team who will understand what is the fixed requirement what is the variable requirements and they work on work on it so needless to say that uh, solution int intent is just not the delivery people sometimes you have requirements like compliance some regulatory requirements as we all were talking about so far um, uh, compliance requirements like especially if you work on a very sensitive journey like cards right cards payment payment using a card their pci dss requirement will come okay uh, i'll not get into the uh, requirement about it but that's a very crucial requirement and uh, every enterprise is uh, has a uh, as an ask to uh, adhere to it so that's a must we cannot uh, we cannot make it optional or we cannot put it into a backlog okay we have to do that so that becomes a compliance requirement now how do we do it what is the design around it that also detail requirement can be given and the intent people uh, will actually deliver it so okay uh, so it and again if you if you see the solution intent there are multiple people involved okay if you see the entire journey and if it is a client server architecture you will have user interface pods you will have uh, middleware pods if your integration is through uh, apis you will have api pod or if your integration is through other means say like esb or iib okay uh, typically working on the products right you will have a team for that and the fulfillment systems the legacy system which exists in banks right uh, the uh, which is uh, more of a kick screen or mq model so those will be there so entire thing you know whatever execution comes fixed and variable right they are the people who do that so mostly right what is the benefit of having this is only when both of these people collaborate the solution context and intent team collaborate more and keep on giving the feedback intent team gives needs to give feedback to the solution context that you know all the requirements that you gave satisfied my delivery if, if it did not satisfy uh, then they can come up with the feedback so that way we can keep on improving and involving the journey so that is more of a context and an intent and this is very um, this is very important and uh, uh must knowledge for a safe architect and for even the other roles which i explained right it's important to understand and if we go through this process right it will be more seamless and uh, it will be more transparent also on what we are doing and if there are any gaps in uh, 
not doing anything it will be identified so that's the nature of solution contact and its impact on intent if context changes intent also will change but it is not mostly vice versa should not be the case but intent can always uh, give a feedback to context that uh, see like or uh, if i'm working on the logging aspects or market intelligence aspects these are the things i found which is different which is not the same anymore so that that needs to be changed that kind of feedback they can give to the context team so there are multiple things uh, involved to uh, cover the entire solution okay another example that i could give for a context is right uh if in in a legacy world right uh, if there are uh, legacy applications there and uh, typically in banks maybe the customer would not want to change the back end systems because they have been there for years and nobody has a knowledge around it you know to actually convert it and and it's working fine there's no complaints right so they keep it for years but uh, all of uh, but uh, so suddenly they feel that you know Uh, the license is not supported or it's getting outdated the need comes to change so the migration requirements comes to change migrating from monolith to digital is a very high level technical requirement that's more like a vision but then in the context you have to give the detail requirement like if if it is a kick screen model mainframe model what are the corresponding ui screens can i i can have you know which is more responsive in design and if if the middleware is more like uh, on soap or web services or mq which were very old how can i make it into digital especially rest services so that you know it becomes ch- channel agnostic application right mobile can use browser can use a uh, staff or employee can use so if i want to make design an api based solution what would be those typical services that i would choose to make it into apis so those kind of detailed requirements needs to be given in the context okay now how we do it for that entire thing there is a process there is a service litmus test and which which will go into which category all that is done or which we can uh, park it for some time migrate it later those kind of decisions also can be done or if you have uh, if you have a very good enterprise reference model you would be more granular in identifying what are the business capabilities you have and how you would actually align it into the applications which exist in the enterprise which are the products which are very old and which are outdated and which needs actually decommissioning as in you want to remove whether it's operating system or application where there are no users and it is simply lying without any use so those kind of governance requirements also can come into the context uh, uh, this uh, migration requirements can come into the context and if you have on premise application you want to migrate into um, aws because you have the funding and you want to use the features of aws that also can become vision and detail requirements around that also can be given that is a context now as i had explained before right what is an intent all the technical requirements should be mapped to intent right you should have what are the fixed requirements that you have for that which doesn't keep changing like you know for example if it is a business analytics requirements for each of the application for each of the screen in the application i want to get better insights like how many people are using my ux how many people are uh, uh, liking it or how many people are benefiting it those kind of uh, analytics and insights are also required right that analytics uh, uh, solution mostly will be common and you uh, uh, design you can design an api around that to gather the uh analytics uh, rich uh, application and then you can put that feed into one common database for many journeys so that's something which is very common and which is fixed which doesn't change and then you can have security requirements for your apis you can have api security you can have end to end trust uh, token security between the apis so those kind of requirements can be given in the intent so that's typically about that okay now uh, let me give you a, a walk through of a journey using safe model 
i hope so far it is clear what is a context and what is an intent right though i have been giving examples of a typical bank right you can also work on your area suppose you work in insurance insurance products and solutions will be different or if you are working in telecom telecom use cases will be different so accordingly you can find out your solution train basically consisting of solution architects what is the solution vision what is my technical requirement as against the business requirements and what is the intent so all of that you can do okay now uh, while i am giving this kind of walk through i would also request if you if you have that kind of understanding to write down uh, your work on the solution and also map it to what is solution context and intent around the solution okay this is a simple uh, solution which i am considering okay i am considering a fund transfer solution okay transferring from one account to the other account and it is mostly an internal account so i have my different digital uh, channels i have mobile i have browser okay and if if this is a banking application obviously even staff will access my application so how would i different channels uh, from one to the other that will be taken care of my apis which i design so there are a lot of integration methods that could be done for a digital journey uh, but apis are happening as of now and there are many api gateways to it right uh, so you have from ibm you have open source apg and uh, you have mule you have kong so many technologies are there so mostly people want to integrate to their back end systems uh, or fulfillment systems through apis for each and everything you can have an api uh, for doing functional task or for doing fixed task like analytics or for doing security work and then the api can be written the idea behind api is to make it reusable as much as possible i design an api for this journey i can use the same api if i have to scale it to a different market suppose i am doing it for india the same thing can be designed and be scaled for uk and what are the deviations and what needs to be customized those can be identified in a dis different discovery work okay if i see about the solution context here right my technical requirements would be for a payment uh, like identifying what are the source payment systems within the enterprise okay and uh, what is uh, what is the fulfillment system where i can uh, write a system api which will actually talk to the fulfillment system and give me the payment uh, information so what what are those different systems which are involved in the enterprise whether it is source systems or target systems what are the different payment systems do i have one common system from where i can write an api and get all the fields that i need for the payment tracker okay it's not really fun because if it is a fund transfer right many things will be involved in a fund transfer if i do a payment from one system to the other systems okay it's not just the amount that needs to be transferred okay there will be some account list also populating there will be a destination account also which needs to be selected and while the amount is uh, getting uh, sent from one account to the other account you also need to check right the data that is going in transit from one uh, uh, ux to the other ux there are no frauds happening no hacking is happening uh, your payload is all uh, Uh, fully trusted and a tokenization security is built around it so that nobody can hack the api and uh, uh, they cannot do a fund transfer so these are the technical requirements which i'll give in my context i will identify the systems i will identify the channels i will identify the sequence flow for the fund transfer and i'll identify which fulfillment system i have uh, um, identified and this all again i will not do it in silo i will collaborate with multiple people okay i will collaborate with the security team i will collaborate with the payment value stream team to understand the source system i will collaborate with the back end system so this way by collaborating with everybody we are giving the transparency see look i am going to work on this journey this is the solution i have produced and they will also have an idea right there there are some requests that is going to come to my back end system and they will do the capacity modeling on their side they have to check the infrastructure is my fulfillment system able to handle most of the requests or not 
if not i need to get back to the business and ask for more time so something like that those conversations can happen so uh, that is uh, more important from context and intent perspective okay i uh, just uh, mentioned about architecture runway sometime back so this is typically an existing code or components and it could be an existing uh, Uh, backend piece of code or existing ui code or an existing api which is there but you want to enhance it to suit your requirements to build more features okay you always consider reusability as a factor right nobody wants to spend time efforts and cost in doing everything from scratch when you have something already available so that is also a part of discovery where we try to identify what is existing as of today and whether we can take it for our solution so runway is all about building more and more features out of the existing code so who are involved in that as i said developers and even architects while identifying what is the reusability factor that can be taken if if that architect is very much uh, for that particular system right system architect also can be involved a product or a system architect can be product owner when he actually identifies right that uh, what are the functional aspects of it that meets the business and what it doesn't meet right those kind of things also can be brought down and everybody are again involved in all of this right scrum masters are there product owners are there Oh, oh, all the architects relevant architects are there to build an architecture runway okay this is typically the last slide i think i have for this session uh, as i said uh, uh, out of all the safe topics i covered most of things like backlogs tech debt enabler stories epics okay though i did not uh, cover all the architects here i concentrated more on the solution architects um here but it can be applicable to all the other architects uh, stream as well like enterprise architecture or more of an integration architecture but when i say well, i picked up solution uh, architecture because it gives that end to end uh, experience how the safe model can be applied to your solution architecture so uh, if you see right there are different visions everywhere there is a portfolio vision there is an architecture vision there is a solution vision okay portfolio vision is at a very high level right where uh, startups or short term banks they have a vision for the future today i am like this today i have these capabilities what is my next steps what is my future how i want the to be to be uh, there is it going to be more of digital and everything will come across that funding governance guardrails which is also again a safe term so you will put everything together which is at a very high level once you have a portfolio vision then you'll step down to come to your architecture vision if the architecture is too complex that's where you'll have architecture vision and solution vision separate because if your architecture vision, architecture is, is too complex it's a too complex capability that you're building where you have to talk to multiple systems not just one system not just a, if it is a payment not just internal payment i want to do external payment suppose there is a business use case like somebody is coming and saying i don't have funds within uh, my account in this enterprise but i have funds in barclays so i want to do an external payment and that becomes uh, you know giving more features to that capability if you don't have internal account you can pay by an external account so uh, when you are actually doing a third party payment uh, all right there are multiple solutions which can be considered like open banking okay so that's where an architecture vision will come where you do a lot of t-shirt sizing and uh, understand the cost understand what is the strategic solution is open banking allowed if not why what are the patterns around there so all of that will be discussed if it is a very simple uh, solution with one api i can do the job then it's just the solution vision solution vision will be very clear this is my mvp this is my scope according to that i have to design a solution so that is the solution vision so whichever vision it is right there is always a solution alignment and agreement okay um, and again as i said collaboration is more important in uh, agile or any other model without collaborating if working in silo that doesn't help the work will become a throw away solution it's very important to agree your solution with multiple people right the uh, business who gave you the mvp 
and uh, if there are compliance laws and requirements around that, talking to that team and getting their approval, getting all the reviews uh, for security, for uh, authorization perspective, for the backend, you're telling them that I'm, my API will hit your backend. So letting them know that, you know, so many requests will come, what is the volume, what is the projection for next two, three years. So collaborating more, aligning more, agreeing more during discovery will make the delivery simpler not really complicated that they have to do all the analysis during delivery phase okay that's where this gives more transparency and it, transparency and it helps more okay and we talked about all the terms uh, and uh, these are the art art stands for agile release train where uh, uh, these are like you know uh, smaller teams who work in parallel collaborate more like how solution architects do even developers also collaborate more with the ui with the back end with the middleware and that's where they ensure that you know all the technical requirements are met so uh, this is what i wanted to explain but uh, yeah if you get that understanding clear please uh, try to uh, put your solutions and uh, uh, align to the safe uh, uh, phrases that i have used in this session that helps that you know gives more insights um that's all about it i think thank you any questions yeah please so we have a couple of questions uh even though we are just finished on time but we will take these two questions which are which i think you can answer quickly uh Hemant is asking in say how frequently does our architect collaborate with developers as most of the time they are not available for developers in waterfall way of working. Yeah, in, in SAFE, actually, it's like a mandate, right? Uh, it's like a uh, collaboration is required. We are all um, being aware that we are working in a safe and agile way. And uh, once the discovery phase ends where a solution architecture is produced, right, we give a walkthrough to the engineers, to the developers. And that's where, you know, they are also having a mandate to use the uh, can burn dashboards, which I said, to uh, let them comment on uh, after having a walkthrough, whether they are understood or they have any questions, they should come back and ask upfront rather than, you know, coming out with those questions during execution. That will save lo a lot of our time, right? So that way, mm -hmm. the collaboration and frequency has become a must in a safe way of working. I think uh, I think somewhat uh, this also, this answers near to Rohit's question also. How will you ensure agile teams alignment in safe? Okay, yeah, it typically right. If 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 the if some of the enterprises just want to finish off what is given, typically I've seen that in some of the banks, uh, uh, an agile expert also is brought in, right? Who keeps monitoring everything is done or not. So you know, if if things are not aligned or if 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 the enterprise is falling ages agile for years, right? Then there is no need of anything. Everybody will follow because they they are aware of agile and they know the benefits. And uh, there are people who completely monitor whether you are updating the Kanban dashboard, whether you are commenting it and closing it. If that's not done, it's like, you know, it's like your primary job. It's not just doing the technical solution part of it, but tracking and, you know, governance is more important these days. Otherwise, the, your job is not complete. So that way people are aware. Oh, thank you very much, Matangi. Uh, you welcome. I think that, um, the people, uh, participants have got good uh, insights about uh, safe because safe architect plays a very critical role, and every architect plays a very critical role in the system and building. <laughs> Thank you very much on behalf of the Agile Network India community.